I don't know, but... Now, you know what you need, Chantal? You need to get your butt out of the Middle East. You need to go back to Canada, and you need to start living a life that isn't just a big scam. I mean, this is silly. You're, you're going to be 40 years old. You're out here, I mean, following some 29-year-old thinking that he's going to love you and marry you and make a life with you and whatever. Girl, come on. He laughs at you. He makes fun of you. I mean, why do you think you're over there with him? Because you guys are living it up? I mean, yeah, you really look like you're living it up. You really look like you're happy. What you need to do is you need to go back to Canada. You need to start putting in hard work. And you need to, if a relationship is really what you want, if that's your end game in life, I know it is for some people. If that's really what you want, someone to love you, someone to call you baby, someone to give you affirmations, whatever. I mean, slow steps. I mean, whatever. Get on the dating apps. Work on yourself. Get back to a point where you can walk for more than a minute without getting dizzy. I mean, that would, if I were that in that place, that would be my number one priority. Not who's going to call me baby when I put my head down at night. I mean, girl, come on. I mean, you're not going to be able to heal in this ev environment, let alone thrive. You're talking about energy. You're sitting here telling us how you're about to fall asleep. Uh, so you're getting help. And you want to dunk on Chantel? And that's why I think Shannon and FFG's chemistry is so beautiful, because they're so similar. FFG has to be the hero. That's why she has to always dunk on Chantel with something. Like, when she did the thing with F uh, BBJ, I stand on this. She did her big one. She did her big one with that one. Especially with the way Chantel was running her mouth, talking about FFG's dogs. and all. When I saw her pull that off, I said... Leave it to Chantel to have me applaud FFG. I was pissed. I was like, oh, this was so good. She trolled the fuck out of you. Oh, my God. So, just so we're clear, and you heard it here first. What happened with BBJ? Rescuing BBJ? The BBJ rescue um, to FFG will be with um, the 89 LBs are to Amber. You will always hear about it for years to come. Always. That's never going to die. She did her big one. She had to make it public. And for those saying, oh, it was for the money. I think you guys forget. I've said this before. Multiple things can be right at once. She did her big one and definitely helped BBJ. Because at this point, I think almost anybody's better than Chantel. But yes, of course it was for the money. If it wasn't for the money, she would have. she wouldn't have made it public. Of course it was for the money. Are you kidding? The bitch held the whole... She shopped for BBJ's collar on stream. She shopped for a cat to get a Gucci collar for a cat. Of course it was for money. But I'm not going to take away the fact that, like, at least she got BBJ. But yes, it was for money. Yes, it was for content. Are you crazy? That is her 89 LBs, bitch. She is never letting that go. That will always be content in some way. Isms. So... Uh, French Fried Girls should be worried because Chantal was threatening to sue again. Uh, shadowed that she might have returned to Canada to handle some other business, and she would handle that while she was there. Um, I would be terrified if I was French Fried Girl. So terrified. This is the woman who couldn't even make a vet appointment, and she's going to coordinate a multi-person lawsuit because she felt duped about her cat being given to somebody else. By her to somebody else. Um, but she couldn't tell you who because the selfish bitch wouldn't even walk down the stairs to go say bye. She handed it to Pete's. Again, many reasons we can't follow through with our commitments. So, um, And Chantal doesn't have much tolerance for distress or discomfort. If something isn't exactly the way she wants to eat it, she's not going to eat it. If it's not the right temperature, she's not going to eat it. Um, so you would think someone as large as her would be much more picky. But uh, we're being much less picky. But actually, some of the more morbidly obese people I know are rather picky about their food. And like other folks who deal with addiction, um, can get pretty nasty if they don't get what they want. How many people think that they've probably fought about food a couple times already? I'm sure he was fine with her coming over, but she probably, she farted out a bunch of promises initially that she was going to, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and lose weight and it'll be great and I'll be going to the beach and we'll be travel-beezing. If you're too fat for a plane, you got to do something. 
because now you can't even get out of there in a hurry if you need to. Um, there's no shame in buying two plane seats if you need them, but if you don't like that you need them or that you're cutting it close to needing them, whose job is it to change the shape of Chantal's body? Yours? Mine? A pill? Some Ozempic? No, it comes down to Chantal and what she chooses to do. At this point, she's had more resources and opportunities and access to treatment over the years that most people don't give a shit how she feels or that she probably can't handle all of her ADLs maybe on her own because she was always such a nasty, self-centered person that her discomfort brings people pleasure. We've heard of schadenfreude, you know, it's the same sort of thing. I don't So we saw some boats pass by while we were hanging out by the riverside and decided after we were done hanging out by the river to see if we could find a dock and take a boat ride ourselves. On our way... It was his hard-earned money to try to buy her food that would support her health. And then either she ordered it without him or he came to reason of, look, I don't love you so much that $250 isn't worth risking your health to me. So if you really love me, Chantal, really, really love me, you'll go on there, eat yourself half to death, and give me the cash. So, I don't know. So and she wants privacy. Okay. And uh, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? He's out with the boys. Thailand, from what I understand, has a very, very active sex scene. So, um, I'm sure he'll text you. But at any rate, this week we're going to... But she's sitting there, not a lot of people around, but it was the old eyes darting. Remember the outhouse? Or going for Burger King and then sitting in the parking lot, full face of makeup, looking all over the place to see who's looking and who's watching. She's out proud and doesn't care, but hawks like she's ashamed of what she's engaging in. So when she's sitting there with Sala eating, and there's people, you know, not a lot of people, because they go everywhere when it's closed. She's afraid of people, and they want to be able to film, and they're weird. They're weird. She likes getting attention, but standing out doesn't really... Like, I think she probably feels like people are staring, because they are staring. It's a spectacle. She's four times the size of a normal woman. So I think people are going to stare. That's, that shouldn't be unexpected. Is it rude? Is it cruel? I don't know. Bottom line, it shouldn't be unexpected. And to act shocked would be kind of stupid as well. You've read about it a little bit and saw it on TikTok. Please look better after yourself. Take better care of yourself. If not you, for your husband that you told us you love so much, how much do you love him if you're willing to eat yourself to death? Because it's too difficult to try to get better. Beyond 36 hours. If you're there, I'm not a 12-stepper, but the bondage of self. She's so obsessed with meeting her own wants and needs that she, to her inadvertently, steps on people and hurts people in that way. There's another side of Chantal that is a complete sociopath and pretty much doesn't care about feelings, doesn't know how to act. That's why we had the, the wedding cake and candles and she erupted like she was going to shit her pants because she doesn't know what happiness feels like, so she doesn't demonstrate what it looks like. She doesn't know love. She doesn't know any of those feelings. And so with all this spinning in her head, her marriage on the line, her citizenship being up, she goes on a diet. One, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot, and I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Number one, I'm pretty. Okay, guys, so this is the trailer um, for Femme. Um, it's been released in Europe, but it's out. It's a thriller, and it's a, I've seen it. It's a fantastic film. It is out in Spain, and it is out in the U.S., um, on March the 22nd. So here is the trailer. Take me. Take me. Take me. Take me. Take me. 
bitch, man. Well, you can't turn around if you're a fucking man. You're letting them win. How do you want to deal with that? I think you're a nice looking lad. On your front. I'm a nice guy. If you disrespect me, fuck you up. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same. Oh, you not. You're a fucking big man. I'm best remember not to fuck with you then. Hi, guys. Hi guys, and welcome to Tailored Talk. So today, this is Foodie's Ramadan vlog, day one. And it seems like Salah may be back in her vlogs. So let's take a look. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to a Ramadan vlog. You might hear some fan noise. Can I just add, guys, has Foodie stopped doing the cameo? Because we usually see a cameo just before the actual video. It's in the background. I apologise. Okay, so frittata, five eggs, one small tomato chopped, one small shallot chopped, uh, two mushrooms chopped, um, one quarter a cup of cheese of choice. I, I think it's more than a quarter because we know how she loves her cheese. Uh, one tablespoon of butter, salt and pepper fi fi with five eggs. It looks nice. It's quite, it's hot here. So here is a Sahur recipe I made. It is a frittata. It was actually very delicious and filling and satisfying and healthy. But why does she need five eggs for it? Hello guys, Ramadan Kareem. Welcome. Her cheeks are bigger than ever. And this is with filters, guys. With filters. Welcome to the first day of Ramadan. Fasting has officially begun. It is. It's so bizarre how, how weird her cheeks look now. Uh, post Fadger here. And this is my new chill bab. And it's very comfortable. I love the material. Very flowy. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to show you a bit of the decorations we just did. We just did a few simple things. So here are some... You mean you, mean you did a few simple things? Because Salah is never there. Stop it. Stop it. Little living room decorations. We have some lanterns. This one sings <laughs> okay with the light on <laughs> we have some manwa salwa it's like a nougat with pistachio arabic treat and some mamu covered in white chocolate date biscuits the holy nice. quran and we just that put these up. The, the Holy Quran that you don't read. Rarely. Like. If ever. Ramadan decoration. <laughs> Alright, we also found these twinkly lights, Ramadan lights that we had from but where's Julia? Last year, if you remember. And Salah was able to fix them because they weren't working. So yay. So going out the day before Ramadan starts is probably not a good idea. Or you're going to encounter a lot of traffic jams. This one wasn't too, too bad, but it was still bad enough. <laughs> we were still delayed. <laughs> All right, time to prepare. But we've only seen her pray once, though. But she's she's praying in the thumbnail. 
So are we going to see you pray today? Iftar, and I'm doing this at around 3 p.m., even though Iftar is at 6, because I want to make my stock for the rice from scratch. I'm making an Uzi-style rice and chicken. So I'm going to start by adding a whole chicken in a pot. Guys, is she still putting the stock in the kettle? That's what I that's what I want to pot know. with some water, onion, bay leaf and a carrot. And I'm going to let that boil down and simmer until I have. It all looks nice, but this is Foodie Beauty cooking it. So we know it's covered in cat, cat fur. A nice stock I can use for the rice. I'm going to top the rice with some, some toasted almond slivers and I've just dusted them in some cumin and a little bit of sea salt and I'm just going to toast them in the dry pan until they are nice and toasty. I'm adding to a pot some soaked basmati rice. I soaked it for about 30 minutes with some butter and a little bit of oil and also some turmeric to give it that yellow color. And now I'm adding the broth. Look how nice my chicken broth turned out. It smells amazing and you know I usually use just those like bright yellow bouillon cubes. Sorry my cat's playing with a bag in the background. <laughs> you mean the same cubes that you put in the kettle the last time? Do you remember that? And that was one of the reasons. I, I think it was the air fried broccoli episode and that was one of the reasons why I knew that she lived by herself because she put the stock in the in the kettle. Who does that? Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> but this looks so much more appetizing in my opinion. All right, so here is our first iftar. Ramadan Kareem, everybody. So. Well, your first if iftar. To start off, to drink, we have water, of course. We have some uh, vinto, some chicken noodle soup which I won't be having and this is chicken uzi and it's a flavored rice you saw how we made it with the chicken stock with some parsley and um, almonds hi there editing Mariam here I just wanted to add uh, you're probably wondering how I got the chicken to be kind of you know well done like this well and I'm just thinking are you buying the chicken but we just saw the chicken but you could have been cooking the chicken and bought um, chicken pieces. Did she cut the chicken or did she buy other chicken pieces? Well, I did use it in the stock, as you saw. So then it kind of like simmered and boiled. And then I cut it into quarters and seasoned it again, brushed it with a little bit of olive oil and put it into a 400 degree oven uh, for another 20, 25 minutes or so. And it turned out like this, nice and roasted. And some I'm not sure I believe her guys roasted chicken we have some feta cheese sambusa some homemade fatouche and some yogurt Julia I'm gonna have to pray here <laughs> are you making sujud? I really love our little apartment it's not perfect well, it's it's your apartment, your apartment that only you live in. But for me, it is. And it's just right for the two of us. Well, yeah, well, it's I mean, it's just right for me. That's what you really wanted to say, isn't it? Masha'Allah, I'm so grateful for everything Allah has provided us. Well, that you provide because you pay for everything but anyway okay this is foodie praying okay i'm just gonna click that back click it back okay so she is praying mashallah i'm so grateful for everything allah has provided us you guys and that's it two seconds of prayer there's okay. a
volleyball. I mean, at least it was something, but it would be nice to see the whole thing. She's obviously talking to Salah. On that here, and we have a ball. Not a volleyball, but we have a ball. So maybe we will come play ball one of these days. Hey guys, very windy day, but it's like 20 degrees Celsius in Kuwait right now. It's very sunny though, so it still feels pretty warm. <laughs> but just, I'm going to show you guys the beach. Look how the water is, the beautiful colors. Wow. I wonder if that's a, like a shipwreck or a ship in the distance. We have our very own girl world shipwreck right in front of us foodies so we have two if the, if that is a shipwreck guys which makes me want to ask what exactly is Salah here for I mean he's currently not showing his face but it's like he literally went from your husband from being on camera all the time food now so you go first honey actually I really enjoy this family day um, with my beautiful wife in this uh, fancy restaurant and I would read this restaurant uh, for the food taste and for the customer service actually 10 out of 10 yes honestly i would say so the customer service was amazing uh just everything like the way they wait on you and then also the food was amazing our mojito cocktails were so refreshing and the food was delicious delicious so delicious exactly to basically being your personal photographer you know you may as well just go home he doesn't offer you anything that you now can't do yourself. All he does is 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 um, follow you and film you. You can just follow and film yourself back in Canada. Like, what is Salah really there for? He's just a photographer at this point. A paid photographer. He's not a husband anymore. What do you need him for? Uh, can you know anybody can tell me in the comments <laughs> this is right near us I can't believe it It's so boring when it's just you. At least when Salah's there, there is the awkwardness of Foodie trying to make a relationship look real. But it's just Foodie and she's just boring. She walks. She's boring. She's awkward and she walks. And that's it. I mean, it. you know what? It, it's nice to see her doing some exercise. I'll give her that. Maybe I am too hard. It's nice that she's out there walking. If she could do that regularly, she'd make some progress. I do wonder how Salah is doing since the surgery. Obviously, he's, he's healed. But, like, what kind of surgery did he have? Like, it was like a... What was it? Like a spot? Like a, like an anal spot or an anal cyst or something? I'm guessing he's okay now. I hope he is. What kind of spider slash beetle is that? 
you. I thought she was pointing at a cat, first Ooh. of all. <laughs> it's kind of cool looking, though. Hey, little alien. This is a beetle. A type of beetle. What type of beetle? Wait a sec. Is that Salah's finger? That's Salah's scat index finger. That, that woof woof. You know, I will shit on you. I will piss on you. Yeah, I am your God. Give me your cross. <laughs> <laughs> like that's his finger that's his finger i'm guessing <laughs> doesn't mind oh okay look guys i'm touching grass <laughs> Why don't you reach out and try and touch your husband? All right. So while I'm sitting here, I just wanted to talk to you guys a bit about, you know, what the spirit of Ramadan really is, especially for me. So Ramadan is not about, you know, how fancy of decorations you have or how fancy of dress you have. Um, or how big of meals you prepare. It's actually just meant to be a time of spiritual growth, of growing closer to Allah. And it's a time for reflection, a time for fasting, a time for appreciation. Yeah, but really, shouldn't you be growing closer to Allah every day? It's not just, it's not just for Ramadan with Muslims, is it? It's every day you should be learning, every day you should be growing, every day you should be getting closer to God. And especially as a new Muslim, foodie, you should be doing that every day. That sounds really judgmental. <laughs> and it's a time to be modest in everything, in every way, and just commit yourself to Allah, doing a lot of praying, praying those extra prayers, and just focusing on prayer and your relationship with Allah. Could Allah, um, could Salah get a bit closer to her? Because he's really quite far away from her. Could he, could he zoom in on her? Can he get closer? Well, that's all that Ramadan really should be about. Um, you know, I know we have like a few decorations, but we didn't go all out. We just kind of... Not close enough to piss, Salah. Just Just, just close enough so that we can really see her face. Not close enough to shit, Salah. Just, just close enough to get an up close picture. Again, I just, we just want to focus on basically what the focus of the spirit of Ramadan really is, and that's really just your relationship with Allah. Another thing that's really important with Ramadan is the time for giving and charity. Um, so that's another thing that's very, very important during this time. So. All right, guys, so I'm going to end the video here. Are you going to ever give FFG an apology for repeatedly being anti-Semitic? No? You ever going to give Nader an apology for some of the really xenophobic stuff that you've said? You going to give Didi an apology for threatening violence against her and costing her her job? Like, I mean, you know. Start start with them. Start with people that you've actually hurt. Here, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. There will be more to come. And I really appreciate you watching. So I really w wonder what Salah um, feels like seeing her stomach like that. It's just everything is so tight on her. It's it's ridiculous. So, thank you so much and Ramadan Kareem to all my brothers and sisters and everyone else. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Stay blessed. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, photos. Ugh. Let's take a look. So is she slowly trying to bring him on? Here we go. Okay. He's not really smiling a little he's doing something for the camera but it's not really a happy smile right she's slowly bringing him back okay that's herself 
Of course, no people. And it looks like the same photo again. It looks photoshopped though, doesn't it? (laughs) Again, no people. Again, it's dead. And I wonder what time this is. That that saxo porno music. Okay, that's the end. Let's go back to the photo. Okay, guys, so I'm guessing she's slowly bringing him back on. So it was, I thought it was a troll. But it turns out it's not a troll and she did pray for a bit. It's nice to see her walking. I do, maybe she's gearing back to bring Salah back. Maybe. And then she'll just turn the comments off. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is she trolling? Is she going to bring Salah back? Is it baby steps to bringing him back? What would you think if he did come back? Do you want to see him back? Do you want to see that struggle, love? Let me know in the comments. If you're still here, thank you for watching. Thanks for listening, guys.